Jason Biddle win, 15 of champion. The last one's done and he's Cuban. He does the job that he needs to do. Get that fight on the edge. Absolutely brilliant. We just witnessed the greatest moment in world history as an esports. It was absolutely incredible. Overcome the biggest team to win the Intel Extreme Masters. Sean Day 9 Plot. Hello. Hello, how fair is it? Super good, super good. Uh, first question, maybe a little bit off topic, not uh, esports. You're not the type of guy who gets bored on his own, are you? No, never really ever. In fact, I, it, it's weird for me to come to these events because I actually find out that my viewers are real people as opposed to just numbers. Because most of my time I spend by myself in my room, uh, talking to myself, watching Netflix, playing StarCraft, doing the whole commentary thing, reading books, and talking to myself. You notice that that sandwiches the list. It's very important. It's very important to enjoy just your own presence. Were you always this way? Kind of, yeah. I mean, it was more of thinking to myself when I was younger, but then I became confident and was comfortable talking to myself by myself. It took a while to develop that. It's an important, important period of my development, yeah. It's important for your job as well, because you've made the dailies your job, right? Uh, I mean, I'm still in grad school, so the government is helping fund my, my living with large amounts of debt. But it is my passion, and that's what I do with my time now, yeah, so. But you do plan to make it your living, pretty much, right? I mean, it would be ideal if I could make my living on esports and that sort of thing. But I mean, like, my, my general ethos as a person is I want to be giving to the community instead of taking. I mean, like, I could be like, all right, you got to pay 10 bucks to view it daily. But I like, why would I do that? That's kind of shitty. So, I mean, if I can, if I can make those two merge so that I can survive, that would be the best life ever. All right. So why did you start, you know, doing a one hour daily show pretty much every day? when you're not getting paid for it. Okay, so here's the thing. This is so important to viewers out there. Don't think before you do something. Just fucking do it. Can I curse? Hell yes. Just fucking do it. Don't think, okay? Because I just thought, I want to do a web show and just did a web show. Like, I didn't, I didn't sit down and research and go on Wikipedia and say, go to my friends and be like, Mom, I was thinking about doing a web show. Do you think that would be cool? Screw that, just do a web show. So I started doing it because in the worst case scenario, if I don't like it, I just stop. Um, but I started doing it um, and, and, and the, the niche focus of it was like strategy analysis because no one was actually doing that. Well, people were doing it, but they were awful. They're like, all you need to do is make Dragoons. And I was like, good luck in the E minus league, you know. But for anyone who knows Icy Cup, E minus is bad. But yeah, so then um, it just kept going and going and going and going, and now here I am at a, at a large tournament with uh, a song I really like being played in the background. Right, but if you're not earning money here, what motivates you to actually do it every single damn day? Because we've had trouble hiring you for this because you said, hey, I'm not going to be able to do a couple of dailies because of it. Yeah, I mean, like, it's getting to the point where, like, you know, Things are going really well, and I would like to take that to the next step. But I mean, really, the reason I do it is because like I'm really passionate about the community and about the game, and that's what's really unique to esports as compared to a lot of other things. It's not like people are saying, "Oh yeah, I'm getting into esports to make the big bucks." People do it because they love it. And I mean, if I tried to just you know like drop everything and drop doing the daily, then I would hurt the community and. I, I just don't want to do that. It's very valuable to me. And this works nicely, the synergy where I come here and I get to meet the people who get really happy from watching it. And that makes me drive a lot of pleasure. So you've mentioned the next step for your show. What is the next step? Uh, continue doing it and hope I have things figured out by the time I finish grad school. Because right now um, I'm in my final thesis year. So that does have to be my focus. Because I don't want to have accumulated five figures of debt to just drop out <laughs> so I got to do that for now but again I would like to get to a point where I can sustain myself on it but still be giving a lot of stuff away for free yeah but you have added structure to the to the day nine daily Funday Monday and you'll be Tuesday and so on and so forth so I'm asking more in the, these terms in the content terms what's the future for the show yeah I mean that's something that like I was 
I was considering doing for a while, but you know, again, with so much time commitment, it was easier to just sit down and just whip up a daily. Because honestly, I would prepare it 20 minutes before I went live, just by figuring out what game I was doing. But the structure makes it, um, every day feels a little bit more like an event for me. And I think that that's a good move just for me because it, it means that I, I kind of have to do less planning. You know, for Tuesday, I don't have to go, what is a random game I could pick that's interesting? I can say, what is a common problem? There, that's Newbie Tuesday. Got that week covered. Um, so, helps for organization. And I did the Fun Day Monday as a, as a test. And you're, and you're starting to see me, ex like, I then I did Tuesday, and now I'm doing Wednesday. And nothing really rhymes with Sunday or Thursday. But I'm still hoping to do more kind of themes like that because it was getting a little dry for everyone to just be like, and it's another analysis. And look, it's another analysis. And now we're going to do another analysis. So, yeah, that's that answer. I did. Speaking of StarCraft strategy, uh, are you surprised that the game is all, I mean, let's talk about the stage of the meta game, the builds, and how far ahead are we? And when is it going to be? I guess the question I want to ask you is, uh, are you surprised or underwhelmed with how advanced uh, the strategy is right now and how deep down further I mean it's gonna change consistently but w when is the point when we say these players are good and they, they have the game figured out and uh, you know before the point when they actually started playing against the player yeah well I mean still still people will watch the brood or players who have played for like 12 years and go oh that guy's awful a guy who's played like 10,000 hours of the game and stuff. So, I mean, it's all kind of relative. But honestly, I think the game's progressing really nicely. Let me just, uh, mm, have all that casting stuck in my throat. But I mean, like, um, first of all, people overreact. People flip out because they're like, oh my God, people haven't been doing micro on day three of the beta. This game's garbage. When everyone kind of forgets that the original StarCraft was actually a bad game like balance wise, like Mutalisks literally won everything. That's all you had to do. Even before people figured out the fancy micro. But actually today, um, in this tournament, I'm particularly excited to see like the developments that have been happening because in Phoenix against Druby, two times Phoenix was behind and in a terrible position and he forced a win. Like he pushed himself forward. It wasn't luck. It, I mean, Druby did make a few mistakes in game five, but game four especially. It was not luck, it was not a gimmick, it wasn't cheesing, it was him just being a better tactician. And that is really exciting because in a lot of tournaments, it's been kind of like even, 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 whomp, one player loses. But now we see it's like even, even, uh-oh, Phoenix is starting to lose. No, he doesn't want to lose, bam, and pushes it right back. So that right here is the first turn or have really started to see some of the big beginnings of that go on. Would you ever like to follow in your brother's footsteps and go and uh, shoutcast events in Korea? No, he's got that, man. I mean, I'm like, there's plenty of events to do out in, in the West and really that's one of my life dreams to have esports be a huge industry and have all like, like this convention, this is Comic Con, but if this were fucking competitive nerd con, and there was like a StarCraft stage, it was like a 4,000 foot screen. That would be like awesome. So, I mean, I, it's, it's actually really great because Nick can cover all like the Southeast Asia tournaments in like China, Korea, um, in that area. And then I can do a lot of the stuff in America. And it's just, it's, it's really nice because we like chat about it. We like high five each other and shit over the internet, of course. Does he love Artosis more than you? Um, that's pretty hard. We both love Artosis quite a bit, but he and Nick are really close. Does he love Artosis more than he does uh, he does you? Oh, yes, undeniably. Absolutely. So not a good big brother? No, I mean, it's, it's not his fault. Artosis is just so awesome. I mean, like, because a lot of people see the Artosis that does the interviews. It's very sort of like, all right, let's, we have, we have Gurr here, and there's a little thing with the mic, but, like, off camera, he is hilarious. Every time we talk, I get in tears laughing. All right. Uh, tell me a good Nick story. Tell me something about Tasteless that, you know, people don't know that people will enjoy. Maybe something, I don't know, interesting, embarrassing, incriminating. Just don't get him in trouble with GOM TV. Well, I think the, the story that comes to mind is um, 
when we had, like, in 2004's WCG for USA, because, I mean, obviously the WCG tournament's been going on for years and years and years. Organization's been changing, and in that year, there were 20 locations over the United States, 20 qualifiers, and one person from each qualifier advanced. So our nearest qualifier were in Kansas City. It was in St. Louis, a four-hour drive away. And it was, like, broken up, so you had to show up three different weekends over the summer to be able to qualify. So... It was the first weekend that we had to drive out. Weirdly enough, we had gone the previous weekend for Counter-Strike because our other friends played Counter-Strike. So we knew where we were going, but we had some school event we had to do, like some pasta dinner or some shit, till like 10 p.m. So we left at like 11 to go to St. Louis. And then we had to go to sleep, and then we had a tournament at 8. So it's like this four-hour drive. And we didn't actually have a ride there, so I had to convince one of our friends, that it would be cool to drive all night to take us to a tournament. So we got our friend Clint to, to like drive us, and Clint was awful at StarCraft. We ta taught him how to four pool, right? No workers, just make a pool. Good luck, me. And then um, so he's driving us out there. We got like pulled over by the police while we were on the way there because we like got a wrong turn and went back on. And there was this there was this cop who pulled us over who had like the stereotypic cop outfit. He had like the large brimming hat and like the deep black aviators and everything tucked into everything it was like pristine, dry cleaned outfit and like eight guns on his belt. And he was like so angry and like yelling at us and like pulling us out and like what's under the sea and like shining with his flashlight. And um, we had to explain that we're actually on the way to a video game tournament. So he opens the trunk and sees like computers and electronics filling up the whole trunk. And that took a while of convincing him. But Nick was the forerunner. He's like, no, 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 I totally understand. No, you're just doing your job. Absolutely. We don't want to cause any trouble. It's like we're in a Sonic the Hedgehog shirt. We all have like our StarCraft paraphernalia on. So we managed to get out of that one. And it's like 3 a.m. And we finally arrive in St. Louis. And we don't have a hotel. And the only person is Nick, who's like 18 at the time. So we have to like go to all these different hotels and they say, are you 21? And Nick's like, well, I'm 18, but would a fake ID be okay? And he's just trying to be funny, right? But like none of the hotels found it funny. So like the cops come out again, right? And it's like, excuse me, you need to evict the premises. You know, you're not old enough. So we finally get into this hotel. Um, we don't have enough money for all of us for this particular hotel, so so awesome things happening. Oh, they're doing the Counter-Strike Finals? Ooh, ooh, I might have to speed through the end of this one. So we get this hotel. They won't have enough room for two people. So Nick and Jonas go to the front. They get the hotel, and we all sneak in in the back, feeling all clever. We finally get to go to bed. The tournament's in, like, four hours. Nick goes to the front to get an extra towel, and they, like, flip this video station around. They're like, who are these people who are joining you in the back? And they, like, show, like, scans of Nick's driver's license. And Nick's like, oh, my God, it's just... We're just a bunch of nerds. We're not going to party. We, we just we want to sleep so bad. It's very important to us that we sleep before our video game tournament. So, like, he has to, like, come back and get all our equipment and show it to the front just to prove that we're at, like, a video game convention or going to a video game tournament. We're all, like, really scared. Like, Nick, what if we don't sleep enough? We don't qualify. But he managed to use his sexy speaking skills, even at a young age, to, to, to progress esports. That was his first like pro bono work, letting us stay in that hotel room. All right, uh, final question. You're super popular, do you have groupies? Or at least people willing to sleep with you just because you're day nine? Only men. <laughs> well, actually, I think statistically 2% of my viewers are female. Yeah. Um, but I mean, what's really cool is that everyone's really nice. Like, when I come here, like, no one's ever annoying. Everyone's just really, really, really nice and polite. You know, they're like, hey, I'm sorry, I don't want to bug you, but is there any chance we could do a photo? And I'd be like, yeah, of course. No one's like, come here, man, let's do this. You know, because I've actually seen other people be like that to other, uh, like, uh, in other game communities, actually, I've seen that. But StarCraft community, never, man. Nice people in the world. And plus, they're here for Comic-Con. So I see some of them wearing Green Lantern shirts, and I'm just like, yeah, Green Lantern. Nerding it up, baby. Mm. All right, well then, uh, thank you very much for the interview. And uh, let's hope you remain uh, your awesome day nine. Well, thank you. Your awesomeness, uh, let's hope your awesomeness provides more day nine uh, dailies. I certainly watched some of them. I did get uh, the shout out on one of them. I, I was watching, but 
I couldn't log on to YouTube to actually uh, comment because you said put, 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 put some comments. Anyway, this intro is w way devastated. This intro is way not what it's supposed to be. So any final words? Thanks so much for viewing, guys. YouTube.com slash Day9TV. Subscribe because I just want bigger numbers. And I said intro, not outro. Even a bigger fail. Thank you very much. This has been a win. 15 of champion. The last one's done in his field. He does the job that he needs to do. Get that fight on the edge. Absolutely brilliant. We just witnessed the greatest moment in world history as an esports. It was absolutely incredible. Overcome the biggest team to win the Intel Extreme Masters.